Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. This is another paid request, this time for Brian. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, topics, reviews, re-reviews, commentaries, reactions, or pretty much anything in between, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Now, uh, this video, he wanted me to react to Dead Pits movie poster collection part one now I have actually seen this but it's been a long long time and before I start a little bit of backstory on who Dead Pit are deadpit.com uh, way back in the day I first heard these guys in 2007 or 2008 somewhere around there and they were talking about how the horror films at that time sucked so as you can see not much has changed since then, but they were one of the first like horror horror talk radio show. No one was doing that kind of stuff. I mean, this was before YouTube was really a thing, and then YouTube started getting going, and these guys made videos like in 2007, watching Rob Zombie's Halloween in the theater. 2006, I think they watched The Chainsaw Massacre, The Beginning. In theater, which I uh, feel bad for him watching that movie in the theater. Although, Tessa Chainsaw 3D was worse. But, yeah, I started listening to them. Really enjoyed them. It was two guys, CK, the Creepy Kentuckian, and Uncle Bill. And they had a website. They had a message board. I was there as Rambo fan. And enjoy them ever since. And then them, as well as a few other people, got me curious of making videos. And uh, th those two guys have treated me well ever since. They've always been kind to me, generous to me. They even invited me on their Dead Pit channel about uh, two months ago to do a commentary on Ernest Saves Christmas. Um, hopefully we can do something again, whether topic or just random generalness. Random generalness? What the hell is that? So, random, whatever. But, I do vaguely remember this. This is when a guy, nice guy on the message board, J Dog, DVD Dungeon, wants to see their movie posters. And I do remember, and it'll be fun reliving this again, that CT Uncle Bill edited a very fun opening that was kind of like an ode to wrestling promos. You know, the packages that wrestling had. As they got called out. And then I believe, yeah, it shows their movie poster collection. At least part one, so. Let's play it. This is, uh, for everyone on the Dead Pit message board. I'm calling all you motherfuckers out now. Let's see what you got. The, the thing is, J-Dot is Canadian. I'm calling all you motherfuckers out. You don't call us out, sir. We call you out. <laughs> Up in Canada, he called us out. I called you out now, you guys. Let's see, see what you got. <laughs> I've been through a whole lot this time. I've been doing a show. I've been butt-fucked by Michael Myers. I've had a can of shit on my chest. That's been, that was part of their videos where they went to see movies like Hostel Part 2. They had a little skit before. Uh, that's why Uncle Bill was wearing the Hostel t-shirt. Because they're not fans of Eli Roth, and I don't blame them. This is, I believe, from when they reviewed Night Train to Terror with that band. Come on and dance with me, dance with me. Dressed up in an orange M&M costume. But there's one thing I will not have. I will not be cold out. <laughs> everybody, especially the Dead Pit Boys. The thing I don't like about being called out is being called out by Canadians. <laughs> you all know how we feel about Canadians on Dead Pit. <laughs> I will not stand for being called out, especially by J-Dog and J-Dog's DVD Dungeon. Don't call out. We know you change. Don't worry about that craft dinner. dinner. That's not going to help you. <laughs> Where we're from, it's an art to collect posters. It's art for me, Billy. I don't know why, but Uncle Bill kind of, when he talked there, 
He sounded like Emilio Emilio Estevez to me. I don't know why. Something about his like like Emilio Estevez and Maximum Overdrive or something. It's like I don't know, just listen to that. He kinda of sounds like Emilio Estevez. Thank you for being called out. Especially by J Dog and I don't know why. That's all us connects a little bit on this craft in here. Look, we know if you change the original DVD dungeon, that's not gonna help you. But where we're from, it's an art to collect posters. It's an art for me, really. I just kinda like remember Maximum Overdrive. Emilio was talking about the broom. The broom. In the deep, dirty mid south region, brother. We're gonna accept your channel. We're gonna take you up on displaying our our poster. You don't call us a told you. We call you a <laughs> governor from Bertie Combs. God, the legendary Bertie Combs shit on the chance that people would call him Oot. <laughs> Here's what you don't understand, J. When you open your mouth and call somebody Oot. You're going to pay the price. I want to see what CK and Uncle Bill have. We're coming for you. Be ready. All the posters on the mem memorabilia we got called the Oot. We call the Oot, now we answer. Don't call them Oot, or you get the boot. Hi folks, and welcome to our long-awaited movie poster collection video. Our good buddy J-Dog, of course, called the Oot. And it's our time to respond right now, so... Let's go ahead and get into it. We've got a ton of posters. These are going to be in multi-part videos at Uncle Bill's and the Creepy Conductions. So let's go. <laughs> so, the first one I want to talk about. Of course, classic. One of my favorites because I got it for like 10 bucks, which is a great deal on this. This is an original. 10 bucks. Nightmare on Elm Street. One sheet poster. And first up. You know, I guess we'll just go ahead and talk about the frame stuff that we've got. Because that's a lot easier to show you guys. And this is hanging in my bedroom. And it gives me nightmares. Look at that. I don't know why, for some reason, anytime I quickly look at that, I'm like, is that supposed to be Heather Lighting Camp? I mean, I guess it is, but... I don't know, for some reason, it's... I don't know, it just... It, it looks weird because it doesn't really look like her in the movie. I mean, I guess it does, but it's like... I don't know, just something about that poster. But it's a well-done poster. $10 is a great deal for this. It's pretty decent condition. It's folded, of course. What can you do? Very eye-catching. What down here that I want to showcase is... And no Freddy Krueger on the poster. Gates of Hell, one tree poster. Lucio Fulci's classic... The dead shall rise and walk the earth. Where'd they get that slogan from? I don't know, that's original. I don't know, that's one of the most original things Fulci's ever done. It's from uh, World War Z. It's a little bit more beat up, you know, but it's harder to find, so. That's pretty decent, Lucio Fulci. It's shocking the fuck out of me. It's one of his, be it's one of his better films. So, hopefully I'll get that signed someday by... If you find it, I'm going to a beat. Underlay, underlay. And I'm missing a mini a pachita pachita. Underlay, underlay. Another one I got. The bouffant up the bubble. This one's a little buffed in. Ah, the forest. Um, one of Jerry Horror's favorite uh, slasher movies. That's a nice painting. The forest, which I always love the artwork on this. And uh, if you can see down there, it's actually signed by the director, Don Jones. Uh, and Jones. this one's actually become pretty difficult to find. I think somebody was messaging me, wanting to know where the hell I got this poster. I was going to pause there because you you, you can't see it well, but you just type the Forest '80s film. It amazes me that you know the Forest is not a film people know about. Uh, that's a film that eh, I couldn't really get into. It, it's got a couple interesting ideas. It's not the war slasher room of the '80s. I'll take it over final exam but it's not one of my favorites but just how the artwork even for a film that was a low budget slasher film thank you computer shows that my told me my editing is done the publishing of a video but it just shows even for a low budget film they took care to want to promote the film as best as they could 
Uh, that's something that's not done a lot nowadays. So it showed that there was a bit more care to want to sell you to get your butt in the theater or see it however way possible. The odd thing is, like about five years ago, I got it for like one dollar. Buy it now. Which, oh wow! Yeah, you'll love that. That poster, I bet, was worth a fucking penny and a half. Not an, well, not an actual penny. I just meant it's not. I bet that'd be worth a shit ton because. It seems like anything related to horror, like 80s horror or 80s slasher, if you put it on eBay for a high price, someone will buy it. Like, I bet if you put this up for $100, someone would buy it. I, I would bet. I mean, I don't know if he still has it. Cause this, I know this video is a couple of years old. I think he's a big fan of the film CK, so I think he's. I guess he still has it, but uh, I bet it would sell for a pretty penny. That is the forest. Don Jones. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Bill. Welcome to Uncle Bill's. I'm laughing because I see his shirt, Don't Go in the Woods. Uh, that's a pretty, it's a bad slasher, but that's a pretty funny one. I watched that with my friend Afri, and we were laughing my, our asses off. Don't go in the woods tonight, or you will be killed. I cut you up in little pieces. Like, that's how the guy sings the fucking song at the end. Casa de Horror. We're going to be talking about all kinds of horror posters here. She's going to be... Now, the reason he's saying horror like that is because... Uh, I remember on the show, there were times they would quickly say horror, and people thought they kept saying horror movies. Uh, those horror films. I'm like, what, the porn films? No, horror. But he just taught it horror. So that's why he's going to horror. Yeah, that's why he's doing that. For those who ask. Okay, so, no. uh, sorry, I'll, I'll try not to stop too many times. The other thing I remember from their show, I remember a lot of things, but one of them, uh, I forget which show it was, uh, they were trying to say posthumously, and CK said posthumanly. Posthumanly. I was like, what? You mean posthumously? Posthumanly? I gotta steal that. Don't forget about your little buddy down here. Yeah, this is, a uh, Scully. He's wanting to get in on the poster. Ha ha ha. Hey, you dog. So what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna go around the room here. Now we have Maniac, right? Talk about some of these posters, because most of the ones that I have aren't hanging up, because I got a lot hang them, as you can. Right off the bat, we got the Maniac poster, right? Well, shit, you can't see it on there. See? Maybe it'll be up close. Ooh. This one is hanging up on the Yeah, you, you don't have room for your poster collection and your butt plug collection. Buddy, there ain't no call for that. I don't know. <laughs> so, it's, what you got here? Okay, so up first is down here. Down here. Go down here. And the butt plug? Oh, no. Now this one, uh, we actually got this in a big lot of shit that we got for, I don't remember, I think we both paid like 50 bucks for it. <coughs> and oh, 50 bucks for the it's lot? A, a Silent Night, Deadly Night, USA Home Video, video post. It is. Isn't that nice? And here's the thing about that. Good I always film. love the design on that poster, and if you buy the regular one sheet poster, it costs about a hundred dollars, and I ain't paying that damn much for it. So <laughs> I was happy just to get a small video poster of it. It's pretty much the same it's design, good. and it's it looks cool. it's not so big. I don't want to cost a damn fortune right here, though. Um, uh, I got this for I think forty bucks, something like that. Maniac. Um, it's a maniac poster. Fucking Bill Lustig directed this. It's got Tom Savini in. Tom Savini does the makeup in it. This is the poster that I think when I first started collecting, I most wanted to get, just because I, the design on it is my favorite design. It is a striking design. It is. Any, any poster still this day, really. Um, and then Eli Roth ripped it off for one of his hostile films. He completely ripped off the Maniac poster, and then that shitty film Gutter Balls ripped off the poster too. And a quick story for those who don't know about Maniac, my friend Efri, uh, he accidentally saw that on a date because the the girl, his, uh, his mom was watching the movie and from what I understand, she, she w the date said, hey, let's watch a little bit and Efri's like, no, nah, no, nah, no, let's see what's going on. 
And then I think it got to the scene where Tom Zavini's head gets blown up by the shotgun. And like the mom told the date, hey, what do you think of that scene? And the date got up, left, and just left the <laughs> left the door <laughs> left the whole place. And uh so Maniac fucked up my friend's date. <laughs> <laughs> Can't Eli Roth would rip that off. Completely fucked up the date. Yeah. I think it's the hostel part two. One of them, they both yeah. suck. <laughs> he ripped that poster design off. He was an homage, he said. Yeah. Anyway, that, that's a maniac right there. Maniac. So maniac will block your car. Exactly the same damn poster in your house. The weird thing about this poster is, Hellraiser. it must be a weird size because neither one of us could ever find the frame that mm. fit right. This poster, correct? Yeah, I think it's a 27 by 40 frame, so it must be like 27 by what 39 or 38 or something. Yeah. Mm, okay. But as you can see, it's signed by Doug Bradley and <coughs> Ashley Lawrence as well. There's a little bit of a play in that. You can not believe him. Doug Bradley was a bit of like you can take him or leave him when I met him. I mean, he was he didn't really say a lot. He didn't really talk about a lot of stuff. Ashley Lawrence, on the other hand, oh my God, I wanted to just. Grab her ass. Oh! <laughs> so next one I got here is the uh, reprint. Nice. This is one of the maybe only two or three reprints that I own. And uh, that's only because the original poster is outrageously priced and I wouldn't it's signed, see so I'm never going to get rid of it. I got it signed, uh, I think, at Horror Hound, uh, no, Horror Five Weekend 2004. One of my favorite horror films. Um, my favorite zombie film. Pretty much the whole cast. Love this movie. A few years later, got it uh, signed by the Machete Zombie and the Helicopter Zombie. And uh, I think Uncle Bill actually has the same poster, pretty much signed by the same people. So you'll probably get to see that as well. Look at all them signatures. Ain't that awesome? And some of those people passed away, like George Romero. I mean, that is a fortune. I mean, you didn't. explain what all that shit is around there, too. Because a lot of these people have passed away. I think I sort of showed all this stuff in the uh, autograph videos, but this is like a collection of the signatures from the other people in the movie. Uh, Richard. You know, with all these autographs, and again, people like George Romero that are no longer with us, people are going to think I'm crazy, but with the way the market is with these horror films and memorabilia, I bet if he said... I'm going to sell this for $5,000. Some person would buy it. And people would think I'm crazy, but... That's how big this memorabilia stuff is. Even if it's a reprint, they would buy it for the autographs and stuff. Now, some would buy it to try to sell it for double, but... And maybe I'm lowballing. I mean, it could be higher. I mean, people think I'm crazy with that, but... You would be surprised some of the Rubenstein, shit you would see. Once I got them on the poster, Sharon Clayton... Uh, Roy <coughs> Frumkeys, uh, Jim Crook, Pat Bubba, Marty Schiff, Tony Bubba, Bubba Baby! <laughs> oh, yeah! Bubba and this Gump. Dude right here, somebody was telling me that he actually passed away um, mm. a couple of years ago. Uh, so that's a pretty, that makes it even more rare. And then Nick Tallow, who, that dude right there beside of uh, Tom Savini, David Early, uh, and. Wooly. Wooly's done gone ape shit and signed that for me. <laughs> and uh, here's something really cool, though. I don't know if I showed it in the video. Um, Larry Bear, the guy that passed away, sent me uh, uh, behind, behind the scenes oh, photos okay. from Dawn of the Dead. That behind the really scenes stuff. Else, so I thought that was pretty cool. Index cards. Somebody was talking about um, Richard France, the guy that was uh, that played Dr. Roosh. In the movie. That's mm. his autograph on that. Best wishes. Uh, Maxine Lapidus was one of the extra zombies. Don Rubenstein was one of the extra zombies. All the best. Randy Kovitz was that dude. <laughs> I was really going outrageous. Like, you know. <laughs> and uh, David Crawford, which that autograph, I'd like to get his autograph again because that smudge looked bad right there. Mm. So, yeah, Donald Day. I wonder if he ever did. This next poster is a reprint. Uh, no. Nice. Uh, the original Night Living Dead poster. And if you want the original Night Living Dead poster, you can guarantee you're going to be paying quite a hefty sum for it. And <laughs> I just wanted to get this because I really wanted to get uh, George Romero to sign it when we went to Horror Five Weekend 2004. So, as you can see, it's signed dead center in the middle. 
Uh, George Romero with the Stay Scared. Rest in peace, George Romero, man. In the left hand corner, it's also signed by the rider. Rest John in peace. John Russo. Oh shit, I asked him, never made anything else worth a fucking oh, hell. He went on to make <laughs> such great films as Maniac and uh, what else? The Booby Hatch. He made the Booby Hatch. He made Santa Claus. Yeah. He had a big part in that. Showcase Debbie Rashawn's luscious boobs. And here, here's his uh, next poster. And let me just explain this because out of all the posters that I've got, this is probably the one that's in the worst overall condition, uh, especially the shit I got hanging up, but there's a reason for that. See, I had this poster hanging up for years before we ever took it and got it signed, so it kind of had a sentimental value to me because it, this is my favorite film of all time, and this poster was hanging up in my house for a long time before we got it signed, and you can see it signed by Ken Foray, nice. Galen Ross, Tom Savini, George Romero, Scott Reiniger, and David Indy over there. Look at that. Oh, hell yeah. The poster itself is not in very good shape. That's all. You don't have uh, Sharon or Clayton Hill that didn't sign it. Mm -hmm. You can get them to sign it this year Friday night, though. But luckily, I've got a 25th anniversary uh, mini poster huh. that I've also got signed by the entire cast and Romero. Oh, God. It's right nice. here is my dusty dresser, baby, where I got some cool stuff. Come on, come on, come on. What's this Diet Pepsi shit? Come on, man. What's this Diet Uncle. Pepsi shit? Michael Myers is drinking Diet Pepsi. Like this right here, Diet Pepsi. Michael Myers is drinking Diet Pepsi? Bullshit. Some stuff I can go through it real quick. Uh, the Phantasm Sphere set, which somebody was actually asking about that on Blog TV last night, I think. Oh, God. For those who don't know, Blog TV was a thing that... Uh, before YouTube had streaming and all that stuff, uh, that was one of the sites you'd go to to stream to be able to talk to fans. And I remember I got in one or two of those just among the chat. I think at one point I there was like a they were giving out DVDs away. And I think I won some question, and I won like the Faces of Death DVD. I would just hey I was just wanted to play, and somehow I won. I still have that DVD over there. But Blood TV, man, that it's takes got all of the Phantasm films in the sphere. That takes me back. Uh, of course, Lucio Fulci's Diet Pepsi from uh, the Weekend of Horrors in 1996. I thought that you know that was pretty cool. Uh, too bad he didn't sign it, but you know it still is cold for some reason. I don't know what the deal is with that. That's what uh, it is. I think it's part two, Halloween part two replica mask, which I think is pretty... Wait, this is Lucho... Okay, I thought that was a dad. I didn't know that was for real. What, Lucho Fulci drained from it or something? What, what's the deal with the that? Like, Lucho Fulci drained from it? Uh, I'm, I'm, of course, huh? Lucio Fulci's Diet Pepsi from uh, the Weekend of Horrors in 1996. I thought that, you know, that was pretty cool. I, too bad he didn't sign it, but, you know, it still is cold for some reason. I don't know what the deal is with that. So, wait, it's cold. I mean, it's, is it open? Is it, like, how do you know it's Lucio Fulci if he didn't sign it? I guess that's what I'm wondering. Um, someone could have just bought a Diet Pepsi and just <laughs> sold him a thing. So, I don't know if, see, if he'll ever see this, but what, what makes that Lucio, like, how do you know that's Lucio Fulci? Well, maybe he was there in 95, and that's what... Okay. Uh, I thought that was a dad, but okay. I think it's part two, Halloween part two replica mask, which I think is pretty <laughs> fucking cool. It even has eyes in it. Oh. Why would it have eyes, though? <laughs> it's a prop from a movie called Backwoods. It's one of about, what, 15, 20 movies called Backwoods. But this is from uh, our good buddy Backwoods, who posts on the board. Oh, that's uh, Robert right. Robert Elkins, he gave it to us. Yeah, okay. and some Freddy gloves, this is real. And this is like a, uh, this next one's a plastic one. And there's a Jason mask right there. So, on to the posters. Friday the 13th, A New Beginning. Lord Humongous. Video poster right there. I think that killer, it's got like one through four below it, although you can't probably... I hate to say it, even though that's not in the damn movie, like, why is Lord Humongous on there? 
that still is better than the theatrical poster, which is just a guy standing there with the machete and I did as much as I had nothing to do with it, that's still a better cover than what the fuck the theatrical poster is. Oh, you can't really see it. So Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. Oh, shit. So we'll get the lighting. Move on over here a little bit. Uh, the Dead Pit. It's our Dead Pit poster. Look at that. I've sort of already talked about these autographs. So that's like a rare of the Dead Pit posters, I think. That's the video poster, which has the cooler artwork on it. I think the... The theatrical poster is sort of shitty, isn't it? You remember the theatrical poster? The one with the woman? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty shitty. I like that one. We'll I did look. Like a good glimpse of our next batch of videos. Oh, There's a bunch of shit. Look at all the posters. Shitload of posters. So in this next little section here, we've got a couple things that really aren't, uh, posters that really aren't worth that much, but I just like the design on them. Mm. And the first one is one that we got for free through the mail. It's a troll. See, that, again, that shows uh, how they are doing it for the love because there are people that will just buy shit just to specifically sell it, nothing else. Um, these guys are doing it because they love the stuff and are passionate about it. But there were people that would just buy whatever VHS, DVD, poster, just to hold on to it and then sell it and try to get like double or triple the money. Well, 35 years of real independence. <clears throat> Let's get that oh, off out the glare in there. Trauma. Oh, I could never get into trauma, just, man. That reminded me of the 80s, I guess, and I just wanted to have a trauma poster up like that. I don't have a lot of trauma stuff. As a matter of fact, I think the only trauma-related poster that I have is Blood Sucking Freaks. I don't have any of the classics like Class Nukem High or Toxic Avenger or anything like that. Well, how dare you? I know, it's shit. <laughs> This next one is the Chalk Top poster that Bill Mosley hands out and huh. these people, and he signs these to people when you meet him at conventions. I think we've met Bill Mosley. Hmm. Boss. He signed it. Lick my plate, you dog dick. Sure <laughs> That's his famous line. It's signed. And I just like the, uh, it's kind of like a weird Andy Warhol kind of painting. That was a, like something like a magazine cover, too. Yeah. Sort of. Interesting poster. So there's Bill Mosley's signature. We're going to move on. Yeah. So right here, it's a really cool one. It's one of my favorite posters. The original, this is original, Phantasm One Sheet <clears throat> from 1979. And it's signed, I got it signed last year at the Friday Night Film Fest. One of the coolest uh, things was to meet Angus Scrim finally. And, uh, and these two guys, let me just state once more, these are very, very nice, generous guys. Like, Uncle Bill, like, okay, like, Uncle Bill, I remember there was a time he gave me a poster for nothing. Like, he sent a poster, I think it was, like, Jacob's Ladder. The theatrical poster. Just because he wanted to. I still have that poster over there. I just keep it safe so it doesn't get uh, screwed up. And like CK, how now? I, I remember there was a time where I, lo, years and years and years ago, I ordered uh, audio commentaries to listen to. But then something happened with the computer stuff, and I fuck it didn't save. Did I buy them again? So I asked him a question. He's like, "No, that's okay." Like he, you know, and he sent me them. And I did buy them, but he, I mean, he was very nice and cool. So, again, two very cool, very nice guys, CT and Uncle Bill. He signed the poster. You play a good game, boy. Rest in peace, Andy Strim. Michael Baldwin, the little kid. Of course, we're grown up now. Reggie Bannister, with his, his wife wanted to actually charge us <laughs> to interview him. And we said, ah-ah! Uh -uh! We don't know that shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's phantasm. That's definitely one of my. I just love the design of that, and um, the. I think the artist's name's Joe Parks or something like that. And yeah, it is good art. Um, he's one of like he did a lot of uh, uh, westerns, like the posters for westerns and stuff. So, and this is really that's like a thirty year old poster. So, I think it's in pretty decent shape for how old it is. I just always like the. 
painted posters and stuff. You'll find a lot more of those in my collection than anything else. This one right here is one that sort of skyrocketed in price after I got it because uh, the remake, for some reason, like I've noticed, if a remake of a movie comes out, oh, yeah. um, the original, like all the memorabilia usually from the original goes up. And um, this one did. I mean, that's one good thing, I guess, that kind of become that really horrible fucking remake a few years ago. Uh, yeah. But this one, yeah, I mean, I think this one goes for like 70, 80 bucks. And I got it for like $20 when it came out. Ah, nice. Uh, right before the roommate came out. And it's actually signed. I sent this to his office. It's signed by John Carpenter, folks. Look at that. I'd say that's probably the coolest signed Very nice. thing I ever got through the mail. Look at that. The fog. John Carpenter. So I guess that concludes the posters in my bedroom. So. We should just move on to the fucking dead bit studio and get it done. But yeah, very cool posters. I mean, and a lot of classic movies. But uh, thanks once again, Brian. It was nice revisiting this after so long. And uh, shout out to CTA Uncle Bill. Hope they're doing well during this whole cold winter compartment we're all sucked into the deep freeze but uh yeah thank you once again brian for the request thank you guys for watching take care and we will see you guys later and check these guys out on their youtube channel uh, dead pit um, also they're on dub deadpit.com their website and uh yeah feel free dead pit radio thanks for watching we'll see you guys later bye bye